Hello, everyone. I am going to show you something very cool and with something I have around the house. So a lot of people get compound schedules of reinforcement confused, especially two schedules that we talk about, mixed and multiple. So compound schedules means there's more than one schedule that we're talking about. So it could be one schedule being an FR1 and one being a VR5, whatever it is. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like, all right? So multiple schedules of reinforcement. I'm gonna use these, okay? And I'm gonna say, these are both dog toys and if you wanna know how they work, you gotta keep your dog busy. You put the food in at the top over here, as you can hear foods in here. And then you open the window, how big you want for the food to come out, okay? We're gonna go ahead and make this one an FR1. It's open really big, so it's a dense schedule of reinforcement. All right, so this schedule we have an FR1. Beep. Okay, that's one SD. It says FR1 on it, but also it could be a clear SD because you could distinguish between the other SD right here, all right? We're gonna say, except this one, I'm gonna open the window. It's also clear that it's smaller. So you're gonna, okay, I'm opening this one. Not all the way open like the FR1, but kind of open. So I'm gonna do this one. Let's say it's gonna come out on a VR3, meaning about every three times someone knocks. So how it works, let's say on this FR1, the dog's playing with it. You know, they play initially, they knock it over. All right, I might have to tilt this a little bit so you can see what comes out. All right, you can see some food came out. That's an FR1, comes out every time. This one, first of all, I'm blocking it a little, so that's not gonna help the situation. open a little. Okay, it comes out sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, VR3. So let's say these are two clear SDs. On a multiple schedule of reinforcement, you are going to be on one at a time. Okay, they will come successively. So let's say the first SD is, right, my dog Pavlov can only see this one. Okay, and when this one's here, he's on an FR1 schedule. He knocks it over. Food comes out, right? Every single time, FR1. Wow, it's getting all over me. All right, now let's say when this one's here, he's on a different schedule. This is a multiple schedule. Two or more schedules of reinforcement. I think I'm being a little greedy with the whole, there we go. You know. Let me open it a little more. Well, there they go. Okay, there one came out, okay? Maybe more closer to VR5, but that's besides the point. So these are two clear SDs. Two SDs could be, all right, you know when I'm your teacher, I'm gonna reinforce your behavior on a VR10. When Casey's teaching another SD, she's an FR1, right? So this is the idea that we have multiple schedules. They're not at play at the same time, but when you switch out, now you're on an FR1 schedule. Now you're on a VR3 schedule. Now let's see if you guys know what I'm talking about. When we talk about this, let's say you have only one active at a time, you're on an FR1. Let's say we use extinction, AKA the machine or this toy runs out of food, right? You're on extinction. You could continue to engage in the behavior but nothing comes out. You'll probably realize pretty quickly that it's out of food or your behavior is on extinction. But now what about on this one, on the VR3, where it only comes out that time, not that time, not that time. Okay, it came out that time, that on the fourth try, right? So variable ratio of out every three responses. When this one runs out, it's gonna be much more resistant to extinction because you're gonna be like, oh, well, it does take longer to come. That's why the variable ratio schedule is the most resistant to extinction. Anyways, back on topic. So. When it's a multiple schedule, one is available at a time successively. Okay, right now I'm gonna be getting a lot. Right now I'm not. But now we have a mixed schedule, okay? And a mixed schedule would go like this. There would be no clear SD, right? When it was a small toy versus a large toy, there's a clear SD there, something to discriminate. Now, it would work more like this. One SD, 
or not a clear, you don't even know what's what. Now it's like I'm putting the VR3 and the FR1 on the same thing, okay? Mixed up. Right now I have the hole wide open. Let's say the individual could not see this hole or the dog pushing the toy. Okay, right? Let's say they don't know and suddenly it switches to being closed more. Now it's on a VR3, okay? This is when you're mixed up, it's excessive. They're not happening at the same time. You're either on that FR1 or that VR3. However, you don't know because there's no clear SD. That is the difference. Now let's talk about another type of schedule of reinforcement. Let's say, okay, we're gonna make this one again. The VR3 comes out, meaning about every three times you engage in the behavior of pushing it down. And this one's our FR1. Let's say I put both of these in front of Pavlov, my dog, and he has to make a choice. Where do you wanna allocate your time? Do you wanna tip over this one that gives out treats on an FR1 or tip over this one on a VR3? Which one do you think he will choose? Yes, the FR1. Because of matching law states, behavior goes where reinforcement flows. If he's getting something every single time he pushes this one, he's going to allocate his time on this schedule of reinforcement. But now let's put it to the test. So remember, in case he takes these little tags off, the big one's an FR1, the small one's a VR3. All right, I'm gonna put them down and see if Pavlov is going to play according to what I want him to do. Pavlov. In case you guys wanna see what Pavlov's doing in my messy office. Come on, look, Pavi. Maybe I should model it for him. Look, the treat came out. Anyways, let's say he did play with these correctly. This is what it would look like. First of all, let's see if he even likes the reinforcer. That's also important to know. Okay, he ate it, that's positive, right? He's definitely not gonna engage the thing if it's not a reinforcer, which is actually interesting because his food, he doesn't really like it when it's in his bowl, but when it's given out as treat form, he seems to like it more. Okay, he ate it. So let's see, Pav, here you go. FR1, VR3. Oh, come on. Do you remember how to play? Okay, that one came out, the FR1. Let's see. So, he's getting the food from the FR1. I don't know if you guys could see this. Let's see what he's doing. Notice he's putting all his attention on the FR1. He sees that it comes out every time. Hey, bro, we have the VR3 over here. Don't you want it? Let's see. This is an example of a concurrent schedule. Both are available at the same time. Hey, you could either get from this little toy that comes out on a VR3 or this big one that comes out on an FR1. Matching laws at work here because he is putting all his time into the toy that provides food on an FR1 schedule, also known as a continuous schedule of reinforcement. So there I have it for you. We have just covered three of the compound schedules. Pavlov is doing his part, participating now. And let's see if I try push this VR3 in his direction. Oh, after all, we are all just animals engaging in behavior. Love you, mean it, bye. Hello again, everyone. So did you like the video you saw? Do you want to see more? Do you want to reinforce our behavior and keep us making more of these videos? Okay, easy. One simple step. Go down below underneath this video. You're going to see a big red button.
that says subscribe. This is a shameless plug. Just push that button, press subscribe, then go to the thumbs up, leave a like, leave a comment, and share it with all your friends.